Okay, we have not yet finished with email and privacy concerns in that regard, which may come as no particular surprise given the uh, review cheat sheet that I gave you at the end of uh, crypto there, which was mostly to do with uh, uh, using crypto in, in regard to uh, email in a in quite a variety of ways. Uh, I mean, you know, covering everything, basically, that you do with crypto in different functions. So, um, the thing is, it's not just the issue of whether or not you can encrypt uh, the email uh, for uh, privacy purposes, but uh, the additional... Um, uh, factors. If you cannot access the email yourself, if you if you can't read it, um, you know you, you don't have to be reading for meaning. You may want to be doing uh, accessing the email for spam filtering, for virus scanning, for malware scanning, for. Uh, scanning for fraudulent uh, attempts, for phishing attempts, you know, all of this stuff tied in with, with spam. Uh, various types of scams, um, which, you know, by and large, I mean, for the most part, it's not too terribly hard to uh, figure out uh, that this is fraudulent, that somebody is, is making an attempt on, on your people. Um, but uh, you have to have, you know, permission to access that stuff in order to do that type of scanning. Uh, well, any type of scanning. You've got to have permission. So, um, the uh, most obvious, at any rate, route around this to, to deal with this kind of problem is get permission. Inform your employees right at the beginning. You know, email is for business purposes. This is not your personal email. Uh, we provide it for you. We are not necessarily forbidding you from using it for uh, uh, personal correspondence, but Note that we are going to be accessing it. We are going to be looking at it. We are going to be scanning it. We are going to be analyzing it for a variety of purposes. For your safety, for the safety of the company. Um, you know, this is, you know, we're providing the email and these are the rules. Uh, you know, you may want to address the fact that you... You know, and your company is headquartered in a state which has decided that email is like mail and therefore uh, you can't do it, but, you know, you're not going to give people access to email, company, corporate email, if they don't agree. I mean, that's all there is to it. Uh, they don't have to do, you know, that means that they are effectively come a, cut off from a big tool that may be very important to their jobs, well, you know, that's as, as maybe. This is uh, the way it's going to work. Um, so, you know, get agreement from your employees. Yes, you have permission to scan uh, for different types of threats, different types of problems, uh, you know, all of those types of things and additional aspects of privacy um, that uh, come into play here particularly in the, the legal area here we're going to be starting to talk about investigation shortly um, when 
you're part of an investigation. And always remember, an investigation may end up in court, even if you think to begin with that it's going to start out as just an internal matter, just looking for a technical problem. Uh, you know, the, the cuckoo's egg uh, started out with a 75 cent error trying to track that down. And um, so always, always, in terms of, you know, any kind of incident response, any kind of an investigation, uh, it may end up in court. So conduct the investigation as if it will. Do it right. Um, and so to come back to where I started here, when you are in court, um, investigators, police officers, uh, private investigators, and you yourself may uh, want to refer to your notes. You have to be very careful. Anything you want to refer to has to be made available to the other side in a process called discovery. So if you don't make that available, then the uh, in court, um, you know, you, you haven't made this available to the, the adversary, the opposing team. Um, that means you can't use it yourself. Uh, you are not allowed to refer to your own notes. Um, so, you know, be careful about that. Uh, anything you, that you think you might want to, uh, do, you know, make it available. And making it available um, because your notebook may contain uh, material that is not relevant to this particular case and, and which you may not want to make available to people, then uh, you do things like photocopy the pages and, and black out anything that's not relevant that you're not going to want to use in court um, and then, you know, provide a copy of that copy to, uh, it, you know, the opposing team in, in terms of discovery. So, um, you, you do have to be careful. You do have to be aware of the, the limitations, the uh, restrictions, and the demands that the law is going to place on you in regard for some of that. Um, some notes, I mean, when it becomes an official internal investigation and people are, uh, you know, under investigation for misconduct or something, uh, then you were going to think, okay, you know, uh, how do we do this? And you may want to not make some information from your notes available to your employer um, in, in, in terms of, you know, American law on the grounds that it may tend to incriminate you. So, you again, you've got to be very, very careful in regard to that. Um, also, are, is your notebook considered work for hire? If it's provided by the company, if it's um, you know, officially part of what you do is, is making notes, then you may have to address that as well. Uh, work for higher aspects come into this. So, yeah, be careful with all kinds of these privacy issues.